so this is a recorded session uh like we did for our church service i'm recording even this one so the people who have missed it can you know later on go back and reference and okay 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 so uh, beginning you know uh, for those who attend the bible study regularly you know we were at second uh, timothy 612 so i hope you all have your bibles we are going to go slow we won't rush through anything the advantage of having a lockdown is that we can then study the bible so second timothy oh sorry one timothy 6 12 1 Timothy 6 12 It says in 1 Timothy 6 12 fight the good fight of faith It says what fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life lay hold on eternal life to which you were also to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many you know this whole uh, situation we are in faith demands a fight there's a fight yeah there's a fight and I, even as i was studying this and uh, uh, if you are following the videos that we are putting up on the youtube you can uh, see the different aspects that god is releasing to us about faith it's very important and as we are going why do we need to fight for faith you know why do we need to fight the good fight of faith you know it, it's a good fight as you all know this fight is where we win but why should we have a good fight of faith and the lord was explaining to me something about faith that it is precious it is important and that's why there's a fight and that's why there's a fight you know if something is uh, not precious and something that is not precious something that is not important just give me a minute yeah something that is precious and something that is not important we don't have to fight for certain thing you know even as we see this lockdown is hap- I, when it came you know people started fighting for groceries and stuff like that because suddenly it became precious i want us to go to uh second peter your microphone is unmuted the video is stopped second peter chapter 1 speak second Guys. peter chapter 1 sorry <clears throat> second peter chapter 1 verse 1 onwards you know there is something i want us to learn as we look at this it's very important uh, what peter is telling us about faith here second peter chapter 1 simon peter i'm reading from the new king james version simon peter a bond servant and apostle of jesus christ to those who have obtained like precious faith to those who have obtained like precious faith so what we understand here faith is precious right peter the close apostle of jesus who walked with jesus whom jesus said oh ye of little faith knows about the preciousness of faith that's why he's saying to those who have obtained like precious faith faith is precious it's a precious commodity that's why there's a fight that's why there's a fight of faith because it's precious the enemy knows your trust and your confidence that's our synonyms of faith that we use when you see faith you can replace it by the word trust you can replace it by the word confidence and there's a fight for that the enemy is fighting because he knows it's precious it is not something of it gets reward you know the bible says don't throw away confidence for in it comes great recompense means comes great payments come great reward even in a relationship the longer you trust a person the more faith and confidence you build there's more and more rewards in a trust relationship and there is that fight the fight is to throw away trust say no you know the fight is for you to move away from trust see god loves you 
and he is not moving away but this is a covenant relationship this is an agreement which is happening between two parties now one of these parties can say no i don't trust you right there is that fight and there is where peter is talking about to those who have obtained like precious faith with us you know the interesting part is peter is writing this letter to us in the present time to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our god and savior jesus christ how did you obtain that faith how did you obtain that like precious faith you know before you say i did something no 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 hold on and read the verse it says those have obtained like precious faith obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness it is because of jesus is righteousness it is because of jesus is righteousness it is because of jesus is righteousness that we have obtained faith it is because of whose righteousness jesus is righteousness you know most of the time the enemy is attacking you and telling you're not right you're not right you're not done right you have done this you have done that you have done this but you stand on this belief that i am the righteousness of god right you know i want to before we go ahead this verse 2 i would like to sorry this verse 1 i'll read in the new living translation nlt so if you have the u version app on your mobile or you are on a computer you can go to biblegateway.com but for those who don't have it no problem i'll send the notes over on the on the chosen generation whatsapp group i'll read it for you it will bring more essence and will show you what peter is trying to say new living translation this letter is from simon peter a slave and apostle a slave and apostle of jesus christ i am writing to you look at what he's saying i am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have you know you have the same faith that peter paul john the 12 disciples of jesus who walked the streets of galilee the, the same apostles of the acts of apostles you have the same faith it says the like precious similar faith he's talking about like precious faith he's writing to you and this is the you so you can say this is me you he's talking about me he's talking about me tell yourself he's talking about me he's talking about me who share the same precious faith you know we share the same precious faith that peter used we share the same precious faith that paul used same same precious so so exciting right and you know it's so exciting to know that you have the same faith that peter and paul and john they all had it's not different sometimes do we get mesmerized by the work they did and praise god for what they did but let me tell you something the same precious faith is what you have same precious faith is what you have this faith was given to you i'm still reading from the new living translation verse one this is just verse one this faith was given to you because of the justice see this faith was given to you it's so precious because jesus is precious and he is giving his faith to you jesus is giving his faith to you jesus is giving his faith to you now this faith has been given it's not going to give it's not you're going to get if you are good or if you are reading the bible and doing all other things no this is what god is saying he has given it to you so you have received his faith say i have his faith say i have jesus's faith say i have jesus's faith come on say i have jesus's faith now what that does it liberates you from generating your own faith right sometimes you feel oh i don't have faith i need to make faith oh i need to confess oh i need to do this there is where you slip into law but when you say jesus thank you for your faith i use your faith and i believe how liberating it is jesus is faith is given to you he knows you need his faith and that's all right to use his faith just like family right we learned in the previous bible lesson jesus is our brother right in family we use each other's thing same way with jesus you use his faith same way you use his faith amen 
was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. You know, if Jesus had to just ask you and say, go ahead, have faith and not give you his faith, it would be unjust, right? It would be unjust. He gave you his faith and now he's asking you to use his faith. There is where Mark 11, 22 comes alive. The giver of faith, Jesus, is saying, use my faith and have faith in God. Amen? Amen. Let's go on reading 2 Peter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace... Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace. You know, as I was studying this, this is what the Lord showed me. He's saying the more you know him, the more you know you have favor. The more you know about your God, the more you know you have favor. Right? What does Ephesians 1 say? Okay, let's let's quickly go to Ephesians 1 and then come back to 1 Peter. 2 Peter, sorry. Ephesians chapter 1. All of us know it. Bible stu students, we know it, but I would like to read it. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. What it says? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us. There it is. There is one verse that tells you you're already blessed. Now, when I tell you that you're already blessed by your God and Father, isn't that causing peace in your heart? Yes, it gives me profound peace to know that I am blessed. I don't need to do anything to be blessed, right? So there is where Peter is talking about grace and peace. When you know the Father, you know you have favor. When you know you have favor, you have peace. Let's, let's you know, reverse the statement. When you don't know you are blessed, when you don't know you are blessed, you don't know you have grace. When you don't know you have favor, right, what will happen? Will you have peace? No. You'll be wondering, how should I get favor? How should I get blessings? Oh, I need to get up in the morning three hours and pray. Oh, I need to do. I could not put my tithes because now lockdown is happening. Oh my God. Look at it. Now you're fretting and fussing. You know, <laughs> you're fretting and fussing like a sinner, which you are not. But you tell yourself, I am blessed. What happens is every time, every time you go to God, he shows you how much he loves you. And when, and because he shows you how much he loves you, he shows you, how much grace you have. He says, hey, no matter what, you don't deserve, what is grace? Unmerited favor, right? So he tells you, you don't need to do anything undeserved. You don't do anything yet because I love you. I have blessed you. Now, when you have that knowledge of him, there is peace, right? We are praying for peace without knowing we already have peace. We are praying for grace without knowing we already have grace. Increase in the knowledge of God to know what he has given you. See Genesis chapter, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. We just read one verse and it's part of such a, you know, a jump in my spirit to know that blessed be the God. I can bless my God because he blessed me. Right? Okay, let's go back to, let us go back to where we were, Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace and peace be multiplied. It's a multiplication. Jesus multiplies. Jesus multiplies. Wherever Jesus, he multiplies. So grace and peace be multiplied to you. In the knowledge. The more you know God, condemnation and law does not multiply. Right? Fear does not multiply. The more you know God and the more you know that he, he loves you, the more you know that he cares for you, the more he, you know that he's given Jesus for you, the more you base your belief on his love, grace and peace multiplies. You know, when it is, it is like a relationship. When two people come together, they multiply, right? 
right? When two people come together, then God wants you to come together with Him, and the more closer you know Him, there's the multiplication of grace and peace. Now let's go to verse three. I want to show you the connection of how precious your faith is and your providence. You know that's why we came from verse one, saying we have like precious faith, amen. And now we have the same faith that the apostles have, which is given to us by Jesus. We have established that. Now, what it says, as His divine power has given to us all things, hmm. as His divine power, that is the grace. So you can say, grace has given to us all things. His divine power has given to us all things. What tense is given? Past tense. Is it saying will give you as his divine power, as God's power has given to you all things? That word is everything. His divine power has given you what? Everything has given to us all things. You know, whatever you are praying for, all things is all things. Maybe it's a box of milk or maybe it's a promotion. He's given to you all things. You know, Jesus is interested even in your groceries, and Jesus is much. He's also interested in your spiritual development. He's interested in every facet of your life. So His divine power has given to us all things. Now He has given. I need to use the faith He has given me and receive it. If I don't believe Him, how can I receive from Him? If I don't know somebody, how will I receive? If I'm going now today, though on the road. At this moment, in this lockdown, if you are going on the road, anybody comes to shake hand, give you give baba, you say, "I don't know you. I'm not going to take it." Right? The same way, what the enemy is attacking is telling you, you don't have a good God, so you cannot take from him. But I am here to encourage you. You have a good God, and He has given. Oh, I like this word "given" because it's not that I am going to get, or if I pray long, I will receive, or I'm praying to receive. No. You have already been given. You have already been given, given to us all things that pertain to life. Whoa! It didn't write spiritual life though. Pertain to life. So any life, your life on this planet, all things have been given to you. Use this verse. Stand on it. Right. That pertain to life and godliness. Again, see the verse. Through the knowledge of Him. The more you know Him, the more you know what you have received. The more you know Jesus, the more you know your kingdom rights. The more you know Him, and knowing comes basis of trust and confidence in Him. The more you know Him, the more you know Him, the more you know what grace has done for you. The more you know about grace, the more you have peace. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which has given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. God is calling you, using His given faith, using His given faith, and by the power of the Holy Spirit to come and be partakers, partners. You know, last time uh, we had a Bible study at my place Monday two weeks ago, and I was uh, Mithal was there, and I'm going to use Mithal's example again. Mithal has a brother; she loves him a lot, and I know their her family. I know her brother. Now, for I'll explain to you something. Just because Mithal's brother's name is Chirag, and just because Chirag is Mithal's brother, that does not make him a business partner. Agree? All of you are looking like, oh, what is saying? Yeah, just because I have a brother, and if I start a business, does not make him a business partner. He is my brother. Here, God is calling you to be partakers. God is calling you to be His partner. Look at the verse again. That we'll read it slowly. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that. Through these, you know, through those promises, through those promises, you may be part partners instead of partakers. You can write partners of the divine nature. 
if you trust god's promises then you are in partnership partners rely on promises promises in other word is agreement legal agreement legal covenant you are the son of god but now he's saying let's step into another realm of partnership where we both work together where you work like me his divine nature to be partners of the divine nature having escaped the correct corruption that is in the world through lust praise god we are going to go further for so what we learn from second peter 1 is first you can make notes what did you learn from second peter chapter 1 say first is that you have precious faith you have similar faith like the apostles what did you also learn is that the faith is given to you by jesus because of the righteousness of jesus you have got faith so the faith belongs to jesus which he has given to you this is all in verse 1 itself then what you also learned is grace and peace is multiplied to you by the knowledge of god what did you also learn that his divine power has given to you all things pertaining to life and godliness now the next stage is god is saying now basis this my dear son basis the belief and the trust let us come into partnership and work as partners okay great you know peter very interesting fact is peter could write about faith you know i i i want to before we go ahead i want to tell you something is we have help you know sometimes you may just feel that you know my faith is not strong or we may feel that oh you know am i doing the right things and a lot of things may happen to us you know peter he is a guy who knows about faith let's go and read little bit about the life of peter why he could write such a thing are you interested to know why peter wrote such a thing okay way great let us go to luke chapter 22 verse 32 Luke chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-two. I am going to show you Jesus as your intercessor. I am here to encourage you to tell you that you have a praying Jesus. You now, we why we went through one Peter, uh, sorry, second Peter chapter one is basically to understand what faith is. Now we use our faith to believe that Jesus is my intercessor. Do you believe? You know. i want to show you in the word of god that jesus is praying for you yes he is praying for you at this very moment jesus is praying for you yes you have a praying jesus tell yourself i have a praying jesus i have a praying jesus tell yourself i have a praying jesus come on tell yourself i have a praying jesus yeah you should be very encouraged if nobody prays for you jesus is praying for you you know sometimes you call up our christian friend please pray for me But I want to tell you, Jesus is praying for you. Amen. Jesus is praying for me. Let's look at Luke chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-two. Very interesting. This is before uh, Peter went ahead and denied Jesus. Look at what Jesus is saying. But I, that is Jesus. But I have prayed for you. But I have what? What's the word? Prayed. circle in your bible write in your notes jesus has prayed for peter jesus has prayed for peter jesus has what prayed for peter just before that jesus has satan has asked so that he could sift you like like wheat you know jesus what his response what is jesus doing but i have prayed for you that your faith what is the word your faith that your trust in me your belief in me should not fail jesus did not pray for strength for him jesus did not say i pray that you get strong oh i pray this he prayed for his faith why the trust relationship in his father the trust relationship of jesus the trust relationship of jesus and peter together would strengthen peter that's why jesus prayed for his faith 
Look at it. Jesus didn't pray for anything else. Jesus didn't say, I pray for a sound mind. I pray, I rebuke you, you, you mind, you are, you're not believing, you're unbelieving. He did not. Jesus knew what was going to happen. What Jesus does is, see, I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And look at it. Look at how Jesus uses his faith. What does Jesus say to Peter? And when you have returned to me, Jesus already is saying Peter is going to return. He didn't just say, I prayed for you and that's it. I prayed for your faith. He's saying, no, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. We go through these trials and temptations where our faith is tested. We fight the good fight of faith. Jesus is praying for us and when we return, when we return, we strengthen our brethren. We tell them, look what the Lord has done. So look what the Lord has done for me. Amen. Jesus prayed for Peter. Even before Jesus could go on the cross, Jesus is praying for Peter. So the Jesus in Luke chapter 22 has not changed. He's a glorified Jesus. So let's look at Jesus in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. I, am be, I will read from the New Living Translation NLT. Therefore, in the new it's we are in Hebrews 7 25. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. Once you come to God through Jesus, once you say, Jesus is my Lord, you have come to God through him. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the door. You have entered into the kingdom of heaven through Jesus. He is able once and forever. Once you say, Jesus is your Lord, you are saved. That's why it says, therefore he is able to save. He is able once and forever to save. You know, every time something wrong happens, every time you feel that you have not behaved Christian-like, your salvation does not go away. It's not like Jesus says, oh, we got to save him again. Oh, let me go and save him again. It is not your behavior that determines your salvation because your salvation is based on man called Jesus Christ who is your savior. The savior saves. It's his job. The savior saves you once and for all. You're saved. It does not base bases your character and bases all that. You know, once you're saved, Jesus starts working on you and he brings in the change. So that's why it says, therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. Even here, he lives forever. Look at what it says in verse 25. We're still there. 725, Hebrews 725. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. After Jesus has saved you, now he's praying for you. What a wonderful savior we have. You have a praying God. Wow. Religion says pray to God here. Your God is praying for you. Aren't you excited? He is praying for you. He is praying for you. Tell that to yourself. Say thank you Jesus for praying for me. Thank you Jesus for interceding for me. You know, I want to read this from the, the Passion Translation. It really brings forth uh, some awesomeness to it. You know, the TPT, if you have it, well and good, uh, you can use it and read along with me. So he is able to save fully from now throughout eternity. There it is. Amen. I'm so excited that it says he is able to save. Jesus has the ability to save fully from now, from now, whenever you say Jesus is Lord, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, yesterday, He is able to save, He is able to save fully from now throughout eternity, till our, throughout eternity. You know, whether Jesus comes before you go to heaven or you go to heaven before Jesus comes does not matter. You are saved. That is what the word of God is saying here. Everyone who comes to God, everyone who comes to God through him, because he lives to pray continually for them. 
the word intercede in the hebrew means to pray jesus lives oh man he lives to pray you know when i read this verse in my spirit it just jumps up to say jesus rose up and he said i want to pray for my my brothers i want to pray for my brothers i want to pray for them he is praying for you continuously there's not a moment in heaven where jesus is not praying for you it's in the bible it's in hebrew 725 it's in my bible it should be in yours but it's in my bible and i'm happy to know that even in this situation if nobody is praying for me jesus is praying for me he lives to intercede or to pray continually for them you know the word it says is able to save it is also means is able to save at all time is able to save always right let us see romans 834 oh man i am here to show you and here the lord wants to tell you even in this time you know is is you pray for each other praise god but guess what jesus is praying for you and because you have a praying jesus and we are like him just as he is so are we in this world that's why we pray right because jesus is praying continuously you are praying along with him i am here to tell you you have help you have help jesus my intercessor i have a praying jesus i have help in weakness let's go and see romans 8:34 New King James Version. New King James Version. Who is he who condemns? Here's a nice question Paul is asking, and the Lord is asking, "Who is he who condemns? Nobody can condemn you. It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes there it is, who also makes intercession for us." it is christ who died and furthermore is also risen our god is a risen god he died and he rose again who is even at the right hand of god who also makes intercession for us let's look at the tpt the, the passion translation who then is left to condemn us who then is left to condemn us certainly lord jesus the anointed Jesus is not condemning you. John 3:17 says God did not send his son to condemn the world but the world might be saved through him. Certainly not Jesus the anointed one for he gave his life for us. Jesus gave his life for us. And even more than that he has conquered death and now he has conquered death and is now risen exalted and enthroned by god at his right hand so how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph the tpt says he is continuously praying for our victory what is jesus praying for you luke 22 32 he is praying that your faith will not fail you he is praying He's praying for your victory. He's saying he's praying for strength for you. He's praying. He knows, right? He was here on planet Earth, and he he has faced our weaknesses, but with, without he did not sin in that. You know, sometimes and many a times we feel very weak. We say, Lord, I am feeling weak. I need your help. I need your strength. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. somebody else who is praying for you would you like to know somebody else who is praying for you let's see who else is praying for you i am here to encourage your heart that you don't have one body of two persons praying for you in the same chapter of romans 8:26 romans 8:26 in the same chapter romans 8:26 let me switch there Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. 
Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us in our weaknesses. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us in our weaknesses. What is our weakness? You know what is your weakness? I will show you. For we do not know what we should pray. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. You know, sometimes when you don't know, you feel weak. What should I pray for, Lord? What should I ask you? What should I pray? What should I pray for this person? Somebody says, please pray for me. And you don't know how to pray for them. When you don't have knowledge of certain things, you can feel weak. When you don't have knowledge of certain things, you can feel weak. Right? Likewise, we don't know whether we are praying right. We don't know if we are praying according to the will of the Father. And all these questions are around us. So best thing is to do, let the Holy Spirit pray for you. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know. Make a big circle. For we do not know in your Bible. We start, we do not know. But we will come to a place of knowing. Holy Spirit does not leave us there. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes, again, what is the word? Intercession. You have the Holy Spirit interceding for you. You have an intercessor in heaven. His name is Jesus Christ, our Almighty Savior. You have an intercessor on earth. His name is the Holy Spirit who is with you. There you are. The Holy Spirit is praying from planet earth to help you. And Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father praying for you. They are both praying in union for you they are both saying amen to each other's prayers even at times when you don't maybe not praying ain't this wonderful that the holy spirit that is with you and in you right now in your houses the holy spirit is right there and he is available and he's interceding for you because you don't know what to pray for and really sometimes you don't know what to ask you don't know what to pray what should I pray? What should I should I pray for money? Should I pray for wisdom? Should I pray for this? You know, don't know what to pray. Praise God, that's our weakness. And the Holy Spirit says, Hey, that's all right. I'll pray for you. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought to. The Holy Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart, this he is God. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the spirit because he makes intercessions for the saints that is this he is the holy spirit who makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of god the holy spirit is praying for you according to the will of god you know let's look at this in the new living translation there are a lot of pronouns used in nkjv so we'll use the New Living Translation, NLT. NLT. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. You know, the world most of the time tells you don't show weakness. Stay strong, be strong. It's okay to tell the Holy Spirit, I don't know what to pray, Holy Spirit. I don't know how to pray for this situation. Holy Spirit, you know, you pray through me. That's the best prayer. That's the best prayer. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for. That's the NLT. He says, for a, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. And it's okay because in our, in our fleshly minds, and our, we sometimes don't know what we have to pray for. But the Holy Spirit there, NLT says, prays for us. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And praise God, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, your mind does not know what you are praying. The enemy does not know what you are praying. Spirit talks to spirit and there is the answer. Most of the time when our mind gets involved, we get rational with God. We use logic with God. We feel we know what we, you know, you know, when you know what you need to pray for, that means you're strong. You don't need the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm going to pray in this direction. I believe I need so much so money. And, and God says, really, do you think you need money or do you think you need favor in this situation? But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts and the Father 
who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying the spirit and the father are talking directly amazing isn't it the spirit and the father are talking together one on one the holy spirit knows what the father requires to be praying for and the holy and the father understands the spirit guess what you are the one who is just going to <laughs> run with the blessing amen amen and the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with god's own will there it is there it is let the holy spirit pray through you the holy spirit will pray in tandem with jesus and they the, they will all be one and we'll be one with them right you know in our prayer life is okay and it is very important as believers if you if you can speak in tongues pray in tongues in this situation we don't know what to pray whether we should pray for a vaccine whether we should pray for uh the virus die out whether we should do this or you do that you know there's so many things and sometimes we just complicated and we step out into our flesh and we start why not let the holy spirit pray through you because he wants to pray through you so that when he prays through you the father knows what the spirit is saying you may pray in tongues and when you pray in tongues the father knows it is it's just you and the father even when jesus says when you pray go into your closet so you can speak to your father in secret and this is the prayer that the father enjoys where you are praying to him in the gift of the holy spirit you are praying to him in tongues and he he says amazing this is the prayer because you are not rationalizing you are not using your mind now you know most of us christians we romans 8 26 and 27 and then comes verse 28 we started at 26 for we do not know right for we do not likewise the holy spirit also helps us in our weakness for we do not know but when you start spending time with the holy spirit praying through you you come to verse 28 and then you say we know there it is he does not leave you at a stage of not knowing but what he does and that's why there's a and because it's a conjunction it's a connecting word and and would you like to have some tea yes i would like to have some tea and biscuits they are not two different things and it's continue just because in the next verse that does not mean it's some different line most of the time you have taken this and say and we know but how do you know this is what the lord asked me when i was reading this thing how do you know read up so you start with this place i don't know it's my weakness holy spirit pray through me and the holy spirit prays through you and he prays and the father what it says and he prays according to the will of the father so what you're the son of god you're the son of your father what happens is now and we know and we go to this place and we know all things work together for good to those who love god those who are called according to this purpose there it is from a place of not knowing you come to a place of knowing but how did this all happen it all happened when you believe that you have two intercessors jesus at the right hand of the father praying for you same romans 834 says and let's go back to romans 834 who is he who condemns it is christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of the father who makes intercession for us we have jesus interceding for us at the right hand of the father we have holy spirit with us interceding for us praying for us and when we use our faith which is precious and given to us by jesus we come to this place of knowing that all things work together for good all things work to, all these things are working together for your good all things whatever this lockdown slow down sitting at home all things is included in that right and we know god brings you to a place of knowing his knowledge now see when you use that verse and we know and we use knows knowing is knowledge what happens grace and peace is multiplied 
when you know you have intercessors when you know god loves you right what happens your grace and peace is multiplied there is where the enemy is attacking us so that we don't know once we stop knowing no grace and peace amen i am here to encourage you i am here to tell you wherever you are and whatever is happening in your life jesus is right now at this very moment 6:54 pm indian standard time at the right hand of the father interceding for you he's praying for you he's praying for you i see the father holding his hand and saying amen to him amen jesus yes jesus amen i Je father's amening jesus he is not pleading to the father he is praying he is talking to the father father thank you for strength to this and and guess what he didn't leave you alone on planet earth he sent the holy spirit he said i'll give you another helper jesus has given us his very own spirit who's praying through us you are empowered you are full of help and that's why you can confidently say in romans 8 28 and we know why do you know because i know the holy spirit is praying for me and i know that the father and jesus are talking about me and i know that i have received of precious faith that was given to peter and to paul to me and i know that he has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness second peter chapter 1 verse 2 was three that he has given me all things when i know all these things right when you know all these things great shall be your peace great shall be your grace your grace and peace keeps multiplying as you know that's why we can confidently stand on romans 828 and say and we know all things and we know all things work together for good why because my jesus is praying for me my holy spirit is interceding for me i let the holy spirit pray through me the father knows my heart the father knows what my spirit is saying with the with the with the holy spirit and the father is working on behalf of me amen 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 thank you jesus you know i we are done for today with all the verses the lord had put in my heart to share with you all right i will send the notes forward but i would really like to you know tell you that romans 835 says who shall separate you from the love of god from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword yet in all these things we are more than conqueror you are more than a conqueror through him who loved us use your faith to believe that god loves you amen use your faith to believe that god loves you amen so unmuted everybody you all can hear each other uh, i believe and i know that this has been a big blessing to you yes right yes yes i am going to send forward these notes to you yeah i want to encourage you to use this time to grow in the knowledge of your god and father grow in the knowledge of your savior amen, amen. and even as you grow in his knowledge grace and peace shall be multiplied to you amen amen amen, amen. amen. you know the with, when you spend time with god there's multiplication yes. mm -hmm. right that's why paul uh, wrote in all grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of peter knew you know why peter could say grace and peace be multiplied to you the first instance when jesus and peter met in the boat what grace did multiply his fish mm -hmm. right jesus mm -hmm. didn't tell him you are a sinful man he said oh leave me oh i am a sinful person Jesus never said oh you sinful peter repent and then you'll get your fish he gave him a business idea he gave him business solution he saying put your net take your boat into the deep put your net on the right side and with jesus there there's always multiplication i am here to tell you whatever be the situation jesus says i am in your boat who i am and guess what 
fish multiply amen right and with that multiplication of the fish obviously peter was peaceful because he had a lot of money <laughs> after selling that fish <laughs> amen Amen. 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 God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much, brother. Thank, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for Thanks, your Alistair. time to join. Uh, I have recorded this session, so you know I will uh, 